Okay, part two. We're going to continue now and see what she has to say. It was a bit surreal, you know, uh, filming in a place like Puerto Rico. It was beautiful. Um, it takes place in the 50s, so everything really looked beautiful. The, you know, cars and clothing, the music. It was just, it was a very colorful um, shoot in general. I, I I couldn't have asked for, you know, a, a better scenario. I, I was on, on film. I mean, I was on set um, reading my books and occasionally Johnny would talk to me and then he started to be really kind to me, uh, like more open with me. Uh, when we'd have hot days filming, you know, there'd be this big SUV pull up and a security guard would kind of usher me into this car and would have the AC blasting and I'd be <laughs> sitting in the back of the SUV just thinking what a strange experience the whole thing was. And, you know, we didn't really have a whole lot of interaction on set until, um, until we did a scene that involved um, kissing. We had a kissing scene and it didn't feel like a normal didn't feel like a normal scene anymore. It felt um, it felt more real. And there are certain things that you do in the job to um, be professional, like when you have to do that sort of scene, and you don't like you, <laughs> you don't use your tongue if you can if you can avoid it. There's certain things that you do to just maintain a certain line, and it just felt like those lines were blurred. I mean, he grabbed my face and pulled me into him and really kissed me. But we were filming a scene. Did you use his tongue? Yes. Okay. Did your birthday? Did you have to celebrate your birthday while you? Well, I could believe that. I guess. I mean, in the. When you're acting, you want to make it seem the most authentic you can act. I guess she was younger and she wasn't ready for that kind of role, you know? So. You were in Puerto Rico? I did. I celebrated, I think, maybe my 23rd birthday there. And what, if anything, did Mr. Depp do for your birthday? Well, we were already kind of talking about books and poetry and things like that. He gave me a few really beautiful poetry books. And uh, he gave me a bicycle, uh, like a vintage bicycle, because at the time I was riding around on a bike and I had a lot of time off since I was a small role in the movie. And um, yeah, I think that was it. Okay. Now, did there come a time that um, you ended up visiting him in his trailer? Yes. Um, I think there was a, we would hang out if, you know, after or in between scenes or in between setups, we often were, you know, talking about things and would continue the conversation into the trailer, um, often with the director, Bruce Robinson was his name. Um, and then at one point we, we talked about wine. It's another thing that Johnny and I shared in common, a love for um, wine, red wine. Uh, and we were talking about um, a kind of wine that I enjoyed and I was, you know, going on about how great this bargain wine was. And I didn't understand, you know, how much more sophisticated Johnny's taste in wine was. Um, so I was going on about the virtues of Malbec or something. And I brought him a bottle of this wine and I set it down. And at some point I'm, I'm, I'm going back to get back to set. And he kind of kicked his like, you know, foot up in the air and basically kind of lifted the back of my bathrobe up. And can I just stop you there? Why were you wearing a bathrobe? Because I was doing a scene. Um, it was a period film. So it's a place in the fifties. And so I had all of this, um, old undergarments that are for that time era um, on. And the scene involved me changing. Um, so I had all the, the costume on and kind of picked up the back of my robe with his boot. And I kind of turned around and went laugh, like giggled, you know, um, it, I wasn't, I didn't feel, I just didn't, like, I didn't know what to make of it at the time. And it just kind of, I just kind of giggled and batted away playfully. And uh, he, he kind of playfully kind of pushed me down on this like bed sofa uh, that was in his trailers, playful um, and flirtatious. And he said, uh, yum. And he kind of like, lifted up his eyebrows like that. And I just giggled, laughed it off, kind of batted him away, and, you know, moved on, went back to set. And were you in a relationship at that time? I was. Okay. I don't know what to think about that. Like, is that true that he did that? I mean, it's very possible because, like, from my experiences with guys and men, especially the older guys, they can, they can be really creepy, and they don't really have... Most of them don't have so much boundaries, so... Could that could that have been like a flirtatious thing, or was she flirting? Like you can't really know what was going on there, you know. Like maybe it's true what she's talking about. I don't know. Does that make Johnny a bad person in this uh, instance? And was Mr. Depp in a relationship at that time? That was my understanding. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and did anything else or significant happen during that that time period while you were filming with Mr. Depp, other than what you told us? We just had this. You know, it, it was a friendship, flirtatious thing. We, I felt chemistry. I felt this other thing that was that would be on the pale of my job for sure. Uh, Johnny clearly felt that way about me. He didn't <laughs> tell me that that's how he felt in many different ways. And but at the same time, that's mm -hmm. you know, we're both in relationships, and it is a job. And you know, I, it was intimidating. And I just remember feeling kind of intimidated and a little nervous about that. And I also was in a relationship, so we went our separate ways, and we didn't hear. I didn't hear from him for a long time. And that's, so approximately how long were you filming in Puerto Rico for the Bone Diary? A few months is my best. Yes. All right. And when you left Puerto Rico in the filming, when is the next time that you had any contact from Mr. Depp? And contact could include anything, right? uh, communications, written communications, uh, as well as uh, telephone or otherwise. 
uh, we had no contact until uh, John called me on the phone one day, and I was driving, and he invited me over to his home in, in California, I mean, Beverly Hills, and I, um, I mean, it was out of the blue. I didn't even have his phone number, um, so I was, it was quite unexpected. Uh, he called me a second time, but I, I don't think we actually connected, or we didn't stay on the phone, um, because we didn't, well, yeah, we didn't really speak, but the first time was the only time I actually spoke to him, and he invited me over to his house uh, under kind of the, he said that, you know, we could get Bruce, who was the director, uh, to come over, something about the movie, but it was clearly not about the movie, if you know what I mean, it was... So I said, um, I, I said, my friends are in town, uh, and I'm, I'm busy with that, and kind of hung up, feeling really startled, you know, didn't know what else to do. What if gifts did Mr. Depp send you during that time period after you filmed The Room Diary? Uh, he sent me several gifts. He sent me a beautiful dress, uh, one that I wore in the movie, uh, with a beautiful handwritten note, said, happy wrapping. You know what I feel like? I feel like it could be that Johnny really liked her, and he was attracted to her, and all this maybe really happened, you know? And he... She she might have been back then like more innocent and young so like I feel like a lot of the times certain people bring out the worst in you and also like when a woman a lot of the time like gets married or in a relationship and she starts to see the man who he is you know for who he is and what he is they can lose respect or become more emboldened and in their personality of, of who they truly are, you know what I mean? Not to say that Johnny is a bad guy or she's a bad person, but I feel like this this um, relationship might have brought the worst out in both of them. Um, like, also, the worst out in her. And it could be that she also, like, she was sweet back then, you know what I mean? So he might have really liked her, you know? Like, this could all be true, but you can't really know because you weren't there. Right? So, I kind of believe her in this instances, what she's talking about. It doesn't seem like she's putting on an act. Like I saw later on in her testimony, like when she started to talk about all the abuse that she's been through, like, that seems more exaggerated and more of an act. You know what I mean? So, let's see what else she has to say. And, um, made a reference to the dressing wrapping paper. Uh, he sent me a few gorgeous, expensive, what I can only assume are expensive, um, collectible books, uh, items. Uh, and then when I was away filming on a different, you know, a different job, he uh, attempted, or he did send me um, some guitars. Uh, I know one delivery, I was informed about one delivery, um, and I, my partner at the time uh, intercepted the, the, the attempt to, to deliver and called me immediately and said, what should I do? And I said, well, send, I said, send it back. And she did. And sh she indicated that there was, at the time, there was another one that had already previously attempted delivery, and it was also rejected. We sent, I sent it back because I wasn't there, and I wouldn't have accepted it anyway. Did there come a time that you ended up having to go on a press tour for the Rum Diary? We, I got a call for the Rum Diary press tour in the fall of 2011. So that's close to two, two and a half years after you film? Um, I'm an actress, not a politician for a reason. It, roughly, yes. Okay. And um, could you please describe for the jury what a press tour is? Just explain it to them. We take a, a movie once it's completed, and uh, if it doesn't have distribution, you, as part of the promotion of that movie, you go to these various places, normally cities um, like London or New York, and you do precedents in those cities to kind of promote the film, and you go place to place talking about the film. And so you were then called to participate in the press tour for the Rum Diary. Uh, yes, I had um, just I was going I had just finished going through the process of uh, separation with my former partner. And I was moving and going through that. You know, it's interesting. I saw her ex-partner, like that was a female. She really looked like Johnny Depp a lot, like the same kind of face. <laughs> so I guess Amber does have like a certain style, you can say. And then I got a phone call saying, remember that movie you did in Puerto Rico? Well, they want you for the press tour. And I said, well, perfect timing. <laughs> and we did that, I think, October, late October, 2011. Okay. So describe for the jury your interactions with Mr. Depp during the press tour. Well, on the... First off, of the, well, first off, the beginning of the tour was Los Angeles, where we both li lived, and we did a press day, normal press day, and then at the end of it, uh, I was invited uh, by Johnny to come up to his room to have a drink with uh, him and the director uh, of the film. And I went up to the room um, to see both him and Bruce, um, but as soon as I got there, Johnny said Bruce wasn't going to make it. So I stayed, Johnny and I started talking. Uh, I told, he asked me about my relationship. I said, well, you know, I'm going, I'm going through it. Um, I'm going through the separation right now, and it's been over a couple of months but that's normal and he said well that same with, same with me you know it's been i can't remember exactly how long he said it had been but that he had split from the mother of his kids and uh said that he understood all right and then what happened next uh, then we drank red wine and continued to talk and <clears throat> the talking became us you know reconnect you know it was like reconnection was almost instant um it was just chemistry it's hard to explain that but we sat on the couch and we talked and um you know it, it felt like there was uh it, it felt like there was electricity to the room 
And so I felt when I was alone with him anyway, and it was instant again. I was like, whoa. So uh, on the on the couch, we, we talked, finished some wine, and then I got up and left. And as I went to leave, uh, he grabbed both sides of my face, um, similar to what he did in, in, in Puerto Rico when we were filming that, that scene. And he kissed me, and I kissed him back. And what happened next with respect to the relationship with Mr. Depp? Well, then we fell in love. Uh, we went on this press tour, <laughs> and we went... It, it, was, it was a beautiful and strange time. You know, we went from, we're flying from one, not together, but you know, going from one city to the next, Europe, um, New York, Los Angeles, as I said, and we're just traveling around talking about this movie that we did together, that we participated in together. And we were falling in love. I mean, it was just, you know, at the first dinner in London, he sat me next to me and he produced the film and was a part of controlling the film and was responsible for the things that I was as a small, as an actor having a small apartment. And um, we went on this press tour and I think in London, he sat, had me sat next to him at, this, at a dinner and then we ended up spending the night together in my hotel room. And for the rest of the press tour, we were, it, it was on, I'll put it that way. All right. And how long approximately did the press tour go? I don't know exactly how long it lasted. Uh, I think, you know, there were press engagements. I don't know, a lot of this stuff is kind of boring, you know, like sitting through it, watching it, listening. Over maybe a month, I'm guessing. So when you returned to Los Angeles, what, if anything, took place with any relationship with Mr. Depp? Well, once we were back from the press tour, you know, we had this you know, whirlwind romance kind of just in these like, beautiful places all over and we're falling in love and not sounds, able to really show it because um, magical. he wasn't, the world didn't know about the split between he and his former partner. And of course, um, as a woman, I was like, is that troubling? You know, and I, I asked him, he, no, you know, he swore to me that they hadn't even shared a bed for a year and that they were, but they were protecting the kids and not publicizing it. So, or not making it known to the press. And so we kind of had to be a little bit under the radar, not a little bit, maybe really under the radar um, because as Johnny pointed out, that the world would blame me. Um, and call me a homewrecker, uh, even though I had nothing to do with it. So, so we were he was, secretly dating, and then he was protecting you know, her. It was, it, was, nice. it was beautiful. It, it was. Um, I felt like this man knew me and saw me in a way that no one else had. I felt he understood me. I felt he understood where I came from. I, I felt like I felt that like when I was around Johnny, I felt like the most beautiful person in the whole world. You know, it made me feel seen. Made me feel a million dollars, and that kind of feeling where you know just lavish gifts and lavish expressions of love and how he had never met a woman like me and I remember he took the foil off of uh, off of this uh, bottle and put it on my ring finger and I had only been with him like days you know or maybe, maybe it was weeks at the time yeah it was probably about a few weeks but it just felt very intense but we weren't doing normal life stuff we weren't like stuck in traffic with each other we weren't going to the grocery store and doing life we were like hiding in these places around the world he had a lot of he had so many homes and so we'd be in one of those homes or my home at the time and it would be like a bubble like a inst like we were in this little bubble of secrecy and it felt like a warm glow as we would say just music and, and, and the kind of books that we both loved and poetry that we both knew by heart and it it was um it felt like an, it felt like a, a dream it felt like um, absolute magic so while you're dating i take it you're dating at this point right <laughs> sorry right. Falling, falling, you're falling in love you're also dating right okay. yes falling um, in love did there come a time early on that you ended up going to his Bahamas island <laughs> yes uh, so shortly after you know, they started dating october of 2011 and um the you know, as I mentioned, this bubble, you know, like, come over to my house and not leave for like, three or four days, you know, just smoking cigarettes and playing music and reading poetry to me, or painting me, you know, just talking. Um, and then he would disappear. And there'd be just no way to get a hold of him, no way to contact him. At, at first, I didn't really think anything about it, but um, he disappeared uh, at one point uh, and then came back and said he was dealing with something, some health issue, and uh, when I joined him in the Bahamas. And that, I think that's when I learned he had an island. And I was on a trip with a friend of mine in Spain. And I, it was for the holidays, and I kind of rerouted my trip to, so I could. She must have been like really blown away by this guy, you know, like he owns an island, you know, like she's young, she wants to hang out, and she wants to. It's very attractive when you date a guy with money and he's lavishing gifts on you, and it's hard, very hard not to get blown away when you're treated like a million dollars. Come and land in LA instead of, I mean, landing in Miami instead of LA, so I could go and meet him on the island, and he had. Uh, Keenan come and meet me on that um, on that trip, like in, in Miami. I get off one plane, get onto another, and go and join him on his private island. And uh, I notice he's drinking Bex and uh, tea, like lots of tea, like lots of tea. Uh, and I, I didn't really think anything of it. Um, I just, you know, thought the man really, seriously, I miss it before, but really, really loves tea. And we had this beautiful, I don't know, less than a week probably, um, trip in Bahamas, a private island. Beautiful. He really loves tea. You know, like... Most British people love tea. I mean, it's it's part of their life. It makes you healthy, you know. So, I'm guessing she's gonna get to something. She's gonna when she because she's pointing that out now. 
She's probably going to use that against him later on. Beautiful sandy beaches. It's a scene that you just don't, I had never experienced anything like that. Um, it was a beautiful place, a beautiful time. And uh, we fell, I fell head over heels in love with this man. So after the Bahamas, I assume you came back. And we're talking, are we talking about early 2012? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So what were you doing work-wise while you were dating him in this early stage? What I always do, I would be taking job to job to job, going from one movie to the next. Um, mostly not filming in L.A., so rarely live in L.A. to go shoot on location in other places. So when I was in town, we would go back to this bubble, this, like insular bubble with beautiful, blaringly loud music and no one else and nothing else. And then, you know, I, I go off to, to work. Uh, and so he, well, eventually, yeah, he left to shoot Lone Ranger, I believe. Okay. Now, we've heard a little bit about Lone Ranger, and that that's about mid-2012, is that right, when he was shooting that? That sounds right, mid-2012, yeah. And were you shooting anything at that time? I was shooting, um... <coughs> I believe I was shooting Machete Kills in Austin. I had a small partner, Robert Rodriguez, film that shot in Austin. Uh, but, you know, I think John was shooting and then having some time off, and there was just a lot of travel, a lot of movement. So. And, and so what if any visiting did you do with Johnny while he was on his set for Long Ranger, and where was he? Well, he was filming all over the Southwest, and at some point I came to visit him and uh, at one of his locations, and I would stay in the house because I couldn't really, you know, occasionally I would leave with his security guards, but I, I didn't really have anything to do but visit him for a few days. So I'd cook and um, kind of stay at home and paint or whatever and wait for him to come home and have dinner ready and... Um, it, it was, we have these little bubbles, but kind of scattered throughout the Southwest and, as he was filming. And at the time, um, Johnny had, you know, when I first arrived at one of these locations, it was the first time that Johnny told me that he had a health issue, uh, something with his liver and that he wasn't, um, uh, that's why he was not drinking. Um, he was drinking a lot of tea, like a lot of tea. Okay. And so, so yeah, there you go. Of... There you go. She, now she's, she's using it against him because he has a drinking problem. You know, like, <sighs> I feel like a lot of people get, uh, certain things help them, you know, like, for example, like, who said it, that Johnny, he, when he would take drugs, it would just calm him down and he would get really happy, and like, he would play guitar, he wouldn't get harmful, you know, so it could be that, um, like Johnny explained in his testimony that the drinking and, and the drugs was to, to numb him, right, so I guess it did get on his liver, now she's going to use it later on that he's crazy because he's drinking. And that's why he needed teas because of his liver. A little testimony about boots. What, if anything, did you do to help Johnny with his boots? Well, I mean, I, um, I suppose that I took off his boots uh, and made an impression on him. And I, would, I was happy to, you know, anything I can do to, to show love. Um, certainly how I felt about him. But if he wanted to take off his own boots, he certainly could. <laughs> I feel like... I feel like, you see, like, they were both kind of, like, extreme in their show of love. You know what I mean? Like, they're both... I feel like that's how they matched in that aspect, you know? Because they were both, like... It was very intense, you know? But... I guess, like... I I would do the same thing. Like, sometimes I help my boyfriend off with his boots and his shoes, whatever. I help him get undressed, whatever. Not, like, keep that he needs my help, but... It's just... I guess a show of love. You know, which is nice. So I, I guess she had that sweetness that really blew Johnny away. And Johnny had that sweetness that blew her away. So they're a good match in that aspect that they didn't have all these issues. Did you buy Mr. Depp any knives during that time period? Objection meeting. What if, any, uh, what if anything did you do with respect to knives during the time period you were with him in the low range? Objection meeting. What if anything? <laughs> I, uh, Johnny had a thing for turquoise and... Uh, that eventually, you know, being in the Southwest, it happens really, it happens really quickly. I also, too, really love turquoise, and he has a, um, he loves knives, he loves a lot of things. When Johnny loves things, he does it a lot, you know, lots of it. Uh, so... A lot of celebrities have that issue where everything's, not a lot of celebrities, but some people, they have this thing where it's, like, all or nothing, or, like, they have, when they like something, they like it a lot, you know what I mean? So it could be that he liked his knives and his whatever, so he would get, like, a lot of it. They like collections, like, I don't see anything wrong with that. But I don't think extremism is good most of the time. You know, like, it's not good to have extreme love of... Anything in extreme is not healthy. Anything in excess is not healthy, so... But I don't think that makes him a bad person. You know what I mean? Just because he... He liked his knives, you know? He had these daggers that he had given me. They're really, they were beautiful in design. Um, and... Uh, they're, you know, long, curved daggers, uh, and he just talked a lot about knives, had a knife and gun collection, uh, and was quite proud of it, and at some point, I, I don't really remember exactly when it was, but at some point I picked up a, what I thought was a really beautiful turquoise-handled, um, 
enough. And I uh, had it engraved with a saying um, that John would say to me all the time, uh, which I, you know, thought was romantic. As funny as that is to say now. And what was the expression, the saying? Uh, Until death, hasta la muerte in Spanish. Now, by the time that you're visiting, Mr. Aw, that's very sweet, but it looks like Johnny had, like, he has that kind of personality where everything is, like, extravagant, so, like, I read about his previous relationships, like, he got them, like, to tat the people he was in a relationship with, he got them, like, tattooed on his arm, you know what I mean? So, like, he got them, their name tattooed, like, oh, forever, you know, so he's, I guess he goes all the way when he's in a relationship, you know what I mean? I don't know how healthy that is, but some people are like that. And uh, she must have gotten blown away because she's young and impressionable, and he's wealthy, he has money, and he has this big personality, you know, so. Okay, this is video two. I'm gonna continue with video three. I'm cutting it up because it's hard to upload them when they're big. <laughs> 